Hello, my name is James Bundred, uh, and on behalf of the Esophagogastric Anastomosis Audit Steering Group, I'd like to present results from the Esophagogastric Anastomosis Audit looking at anastomotic techniques and their impact on postoperative anastomotic complications for patients following esophagectomy. So why are we interested in anastomotic leaks and conduit necroses? Well, they affect between 10 and 20% of patients after esophagectomies in most modern series. And evidence from randomized control trials and cohort studies, apart from being slightly out of date, is contradictory uh, regarding which the best anastomotic techniques are to avoid leaks and necroses. And you can see in an excerpt from a systematic review we did that these are the RCTs comparing different anastomotic techniques and they contain small numbers of patients and the results are quite variable. We also felt that larger number of patients might be required to detect a difference in these outcomes. So the esophagogastric anastomosis audit was a multi-centre international prospective audit. Over nine months uh, with 90 day follow up for all patients between April and December 2018. The advantage of this study over previous uh, cohort studies in uh, esophageal gastric cancer is the granularity of the data we were able to collect, uh, including lots of data on surgical techniques, anastomotic techniques, and on the different complications. This was a truly international collaboration uh, with over 140 centers contributing cases worldwide, as you can see on the map here. In terms of our analysis of anastomotic techniques and leaks, we included 2,238 patients who had an esophagectomy, over 140 centres from 43 countries, and 673 collaborators helped us achieve this. We stored all of this data on our REDCap uh, online secure database. In terms of the analysis, we categorised patients uh, into having either a hand-sewn anastomosis a linear stapled semi-mechanical anastomosis or a circular stapled anastomosis. And our primary outcome was a composite outcome of anastomotic leak or conduit necrosis, both of which were de defined according to the esophagectomy complications consensus group. On to the results. In terms of anastomosis by site, uh, so approximately 70% of patients had a circular stapled anastomosis in the chest, with about 20% having a linear staple semi-mechanical and about 10% having hand-sewn anastomosis in the chest. In the neck, the opposite was true, with about 70% of patients receiving a hand-sewn anastomosis, about a quarter receiving a linear stapled anastomosis and a small number receiving a circular stapled anastomosis. In terms of our primary outcome, 324 patients, which was 14.5% of the total cohort, had either an anastomotic leak or conduit necrosis. So looking at the unadjusted leak and necrosis rates, first of all, as you can see here in red, which is the neck anastomosis, 23% of patients who had a hand-sewn neck anastomosis had a leak or necrosis. 14.6% of patients who had a linear stapled anastomosis in the neck had a leak or necrosis and a small number of patients, 5.9% with a circular stapled anastomosis had a leak or necrosis in the neck. The numbers were much more similar for chest anastomoses uh, with hand-sewn linear stapled and circular stapled having leak or conduit necrosis rates of 13.7, 13.8% and 12.2% respectively. So we then conducted logistic regression modeling uh, to look at the differences in uh, leaks or necrosis for the different anastomotic techniques. And we split this into chest anastomoses and neck anastomoses. First of all, we did an unadjusted analysis and in the chest anastomoses, uh, neither linear stapled nor circular stapled anastomoses perform better than hand-sewn anastomoses. In terms of the neck anastomoses, linear stapled anastomoses appeared to have a lower leak or necrosis rate than hand-sewn anastomoses with an odds ratio of 0.57, p-value 0.037. And circular stapled anastomoses also appeared to have a slightly lower uh, chance of leak or necrosis with an odds ratio of 0.21 with a p-value of 0.129. 
looking at our adjusted analyses, which control for centre volume, gender, uh, ASA, smoking status, BMI, tumour type, neoadjuvant therapy, and the lymphadenectomy fields. What we found was that for chest anastomoses, again, neither linear stapled nor circular stapled anastomoses did better than hand sewn anastomoses. And in our adjusted analysis for neck anastomoses, neither linear stapled nor circular stapled anastomoses did better than hand sewn anastomoses. We also looked at other anastomotic techniques that have been used uh, and have been suggested in the literature to be associated with lower rates of leak or necrosis, including amentoplasty and pleural flap. In our cohort, amentoplasty was done in about 35% of resections and on an unadjusted analysis was not associated with leak or necrosis. Similarly, pleural flap, which was done for about uh, a quarter of patients who had a circular stapled anastomosis and less for others, was similarly not associated with leak or necrosis on an unadjusted analysis. So in conclusion, there was no difference for chest anastomoses in terms of rates of anastomotic failure by a different technique. Additionally, on our adjusted analyses of neck anastomoses, there was no difference. However, the number of outcomes here were smaller and stapled anastomoses did appear that they may be slightly better if in a large enough cohort. And we therefore recommended that the choice of anastomotic technique should be at the discretion of the operating surgeon based on current available evidence and what we've added from this study. We'd like to thank the uh, Esophagus and Gastric Anastomosis Audit Steering Committee. And we'd also like to thank the 673 collaborators and national leads who helped us to carry out this study. Thank you very much. Any questions?